Good evening, everybody. Dr. Glow here with Black Girl Everything. And I have the beautiful Melanie with me this evening. Hey, Melanie. Hello. Hi, Gloria. Thank you for having me today. Yeah, I'm very excited to have you on today. Today's a, is really interesting. I have a flight in about two hours. So yeah, like literally, I'm being that dude. I'm so excited. This is like the day in the life of Dr. Glow because I'm going to do an interview. Then I'm going to jet to the airport, get on a plane, get ready for my book signing. So yeah, this is like really dope. I'm very excited. Busy, busy, busy. Where are you going? Atlanta. Oh, I love Atlanta. That's so yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. One of my book tour stops. I got a signing at the library on Thursday. That's big Very thing. fancy. That's what I'm trying to get like. <laughs> Listen, I, I'm going to be standing on the corner selling my books. I don't care. I don't live there. Mm -hmm. I'm like, here, buy my book. I'm like, what? I'm going with all the Black people around. <laughs> yep. And down south, too, they're really, really hospitable. And there's like a lot of like black businesses that support each other and stuff. Yep, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing a whole tour day south. So I'm going with no family either. So I got all the time in the world to do things. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit outside, eat ice cream alone, and read my book in the park and talk to all that's the black me. people. It's that's gonna be me. great. So enough about me. Let's talk about you. So yeah. what is the name of your business? So my business, um, the name is Melly Media Co. And it is an Instagram management. Um, well, I work as a, a freelancer, but the whole uh, goal is to convert to a full-blown agency in a few Ooh. months or within the year. So within a year? Yeah, within a year. I'm really, I'm really hoping and praying. I'm working really hard towards it. So that definitely is like my goal. So that's why my name is Melly Media Co. Because right now I'm working under that name with the you know, intention of hiring people and expanding my business. Yeah, you know what? And that's important because a lot of people start businesses, especially now at the COVID, everybody like, well, I'm going to oh, start my own business because everybody held this time. But they started this business with no inkling that you actually should hire people. So like, <laughs> what are you doing? You're creating wealth for yourself. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. But how far are you going to go with just you? Yeah, because like so far, um, like some of my competitors who do freelancing, they have to put a cap on how many clients they actually take. Yeah. And even with small boutique agencies, like they do kind of put a cap, but you're able to expand and provide your service to a lot more people when you hire a team, because I'm doing this by myself and already I'm like, Lord God, this is like, <laughs> like every time I think I'm done with something, yeah. it's like, okay, I have a million things to do. So then I just realized I came to the conclusion, like, when you're a small business owner, those tasks, those to-dos, it's just, it's going to be never ending. <laughs> it is very, very much so, very much so. I was actually very excited this year because I brought my, I actually hired my publicist back in January, um, which was one of the greatest things I did because it now allowed me to grow. And I've been yelling and yelling about the fact that I need a personal assistant, mm -hmm. but I was able to actually get an additional intern through my publicist, which is a win-win for me mm -hmm. um, because now I have two people handling the Dr. Glow brand, which is always and forever growing. But let's talk about you and this whole, what does it mean for you to be an Instagram account holder person? Yeah. So Instagram has all, well, social media as a whole has always been my passion. I just am someone who's multi-passionate so because I had so many like eggs in one basket, um, I didn't realize what my true calling was in the moment. Mm -hmm. And after some time, I realized I really love Instagram. You know, I've been, I wanted to be an influencer. I wanted to have my YouTube channel. I wanted TikTok. And, you know, I am, I know social media so much to a point where I know how to get the right attention. And after I, um, this was like after a year or so when I had my YouTube channel, I kind of, I, well, a little backstory, my YouTube channel had reached um, a couple thousand subscribers. And then I had like one of my, or several of my highest viewed videos were like in the thousands, like 10,000, 27,000 in that range. And then I realized I'm actually really good at this. I'm trying to not say this in a cocky way, but <laughs> but I really am good at this. Mm -hmm. But YouTube, I realized it just wasn't my thing. Like, it wasn't what I wanted to do. 
Okay. And I realized like Instagram is really my passion. So I decided to like take the leap and do Instagram, but I wanted to do it with meaning. Mm -hmm. And I'm also someone who's very passionate about mental health awareness Mm -hmm. and just understanding what, what triggers me, what stresses me out, what overwhelms me and how can I uh, implement that into how other women feel okay. or how other people feel? And because I know that there's a lot of, of people who feel the exact same way. And so I said to myself, why not do an Instagram agency specifically for helping women of color? And I may just convert to uh, Black women, but helping women of color deal with the ongoing stresses of wanting to build your brand and be seen Mm -hmm. um, without all of the headache and the stress that comes along with it. Because oftentimes we don't realize that we treat Instagram kind of like a toxic ex or a toxic family member. (laughs) Explain that. Oh my gosh. When, uh, when I wanted to like start my career on social media or not even just start my career on social media, just me as a user, we don't realize that a lot of our toxic traits seep into, into Instagram. So I, I, in the past, like with me, I would um, like, hi, like hyper fixate on Instagram and I wanted to be like everybody else on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, I also had issues with codependency with, on Instagram. Like it was like my, my, it's like my make, make it or break it or I forgot how that saying goes. Yeah. And I didn't notice that what I was dealing with like in my private life or my personal life was tying into my relationship with social media. And then I took a step back and I said, wait, hold on. This is not the people who conquer social media. They do it because although it is stressful, yeah, they know how to handle it. If I allow Instagram to take a hold of me then it, go- it goes into how I, how I operate as a business, how I operate mm-hmm. as a brand. Understood. And so I realized, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of people that do that. And I see so many people like struggling on social media, especially women of color, women entrepreneurs who are, you know, not only come from a different cultural background, but also, you know, there's that, that, being being a woman and being uh from a different culture right that goes okay. play so then you feel like you are kind of left alone like you don't have that support that you need because you're dealing with you know all that type of stuff mm-hmm. and the traumas and the toxic traits that come from it um and yeah that's just pretty much how I came to that conclusion that I really wanted to start my my brand to start my Instagram agency helping women of color conquer Instagram with ease and without all the hassle and the stress of being a brand owner and also dealing with, you know, personal issues that may be going on in their lives. I want to help, essentially, I want to help overwhelmed brand owners, entrepreneurs, um, kind of offload that stress. Okay. That was all a right, so-, part, so I apologize about that. <laughs> I feel like you went all the way around the river. Yeah. <laughs> You know, like you couldn't swim. So you couldn't swim through. So you had to go all the yeah. way around the river. But yeah. right, so no, so that makes sense. That makes sense. Getting to the point where most people are so consumed with all the different aspects of running your business between the finances, hold the finances, right? That's its own animal by itself. Um, exposure, content in regards to your business itself, depending on what you're doing. And then the aspect of social media and realizing you have to be on all platforms all the time in order in this day and age to become Mm -hmm. successful. So what you do makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Um, I found that I was very overwhelmed by Instagram about two months, two months ago, and I just stopped posting. Mm -hmm. And that happens a lot, that burnout. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just stopped posting. And then I, you know, I found some other tricks and hacks to do that. But me and you had a great session. Mm-hmm. 
And we talked about some of the things that you can do differently. So what type of suggestions can you give to people without giving all your tricks away yeah. about how they can handle the monotony of keeping up with your content on social media and also keeping your peace of mind? So the first thing that I always recommend is limit your time on social media. Limit it and schedule a time when you actually go on to view what your competitors are doing. Mm -hmm. View what your competitors are doing and don't necessarily copy them, but try and figure out, okay, what are they doing that I can implement into my social media strategy? The second thing that I highly recommend is batching content ahead of time. So a lot of people think sometimes that they have to like pre those who do batch content they feel like as though they have to film and shoot content like a month's worth of content but realistically that may not be the case for a lot of us especially those of us who have kind of an imbalance with our schedule every week could be something new so I always say I always recommend to batch your content that fits around what you're doing currently so if for the week you say I kind of only um, I'm doing so many things. I can only post, okay, maybe three posts per week. Then I'll do that. And just make sure that you're filming something that is high quality. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be something that is, you know, a lot of us, that's another thing, the mindset that we have, we we feel as though it has to be like a celebrity's type of content or some kind of advertisement that's like worth over 300000 Like it, it's not realistic, but it just has to good lighting, good camera quality, and that's it. And those are my three suggestions. Don't overdo it, and then automate your posts. Best thing you could do, automate your posts, because then yep. it does all the work for you. If, if that, that was, I think, a win-win for me was mm-hmm. when I automated my posts, and now I sit down for an hour or two on Sunday and usually about Wednesday and just put stuff in. I'm already putting posts in all the way until July. Yeah. <laughs> at this point. I'm like, yeah. Certain like, things that I know are consistent, you know, like my Monday check-ins or like usually my interviews. So those things are staples in my regular schedule, right? Yeah. So I put that stuff in and then I still other stuff in there. Mm-hmm. It's been great. Isn't it? I literally quit. When you do it, it's just like, oh, thank God. Like, it's yeah, because I got to go on. Now I kind of go on to check out what people are doing um, mm-hmm. more so when I have, you know, a moment versus I don't have to, sometimes I have to look at it for two or three days. It gives you like that, ex, like you don't realize how much leisure time you get from doing all of that. It's like the simplest little things, but it makes all the difference. Yep. You know, I just learned the other day that I can actually schedule my posts on Facebook yeah facebook studio i believe yeah facebook studio i, I just realized that i just learned that yep i was just on there posting and i was like wait 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 does that say schedule <laughs> and that's how you figured it out and yep. i'm like, to be a blessing <laughs> yeah because now i was like, put myself up on instagram and kind of go in there and i put the same content over there for schedule schedule yep. schedule Enjoy. schedule oh my gosh i need to use facebook studio i use a, a different app a third-party app so if people want to book your services like how can they get in to get on the line with you because some people can't even figure out how to schedule their own stuff yeah what am i going to schedule how am i going to schedule why am i scheduling this like if they gotta have a meeting or even what is high time mean because you're using language that some people have no clue what you're talking about so to educate others how can they actually get in contact with you yeah so um you can, so on my Instagram, there's a link. It's, it's kind of like a link tree. And literally there's a button that you press that just says, oh, want to work with me or contact me today. Uh, click that, fill out the form, and I'll get to you within like 24 to 48 hours, should say in the disclaimer. <laughs> but within 24 to 48 hours, you'll hear a response. And that's Perfect. pretty much it. So what are some of the perks of actually working with you? Oh, I, you know what's crazy is like I know the perks, but you know when someone asks you, you're just like, oh, I don't want to sound like too. Yeah, what are the perks? Come on, talk yeah. yourself up. What can, what are you offering people? What is your guarantee? Um, so I guarantee brand awareness, which I gar- um I guarantee that your Instagram account will, you know, hit 
that engagement that you're looking for. Um, I guarantee a stress-free Instagram management service. I guarantee good quality customer service. Um, I guarantee, what else do I guarantee? I guarantee um, quality content creation if that's something that you're looking for. I, you know, do things like uh, creating reels, creating posts for you. Um, yeah. No, that makes sense because that stuff is important. You talked about that stuff with me because, you know, some people can't even figure out how to create a reel. Yeah. Or, um, yeah. and it's the most simplest thing if, to most people. They're very simple, right? Like, and I'm really starting to get better at my videos. Some of my first videos I handed out first were crap. But, you know, they're coming <laughs> along. Practice Nothing makes better. perfect, you know? But it takes, sometimes you need somebody to help you out. Mm-hmm. And I do branding too with your Instagram reels and your posts and all that. And I also do uh, Instagram SEO. So essentially I help optimize your profile to rank higher in the Instagram search engine. So you can see get more traffic. <laughs> get more traffic to your account, get more people seeing you. Yeah, you know, I think it's really interesting now when people put black girl, as soon as they put the E, I pop up. Yeah, you see? Yep, that means that you're doing it. I know. I was like, listen, I'm on the top of the list. Yeah. You're like, you're right. Like, oh, is that you right there? Yeah, it's me, the top of the that list. That's me. Top. That means you made it. <laughs> I know, right? It's really interesting, though, because it's a sim It's definitely the simple things, the simple things that you do and how it actually builds traction to your page mm -hmm. and what you got going on. Mm -hmm. So... Now, one of the things we talked a little bit about were the difference or the importance between followers and engagement. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yeah. So one thing I never promise people that I'm going to get you a certain amount of followers, A, because I do work with organic strategy, but B, nowadays followers aren't, they're important, yes, but they're not the end-all be-all. Mm -hmm. A lot for example, if you are looking to do like sponsorships, uh, paid advertisements, or you are doing collab collaborative work with someone, a lot of people actually look more so at your engagement. So if mm -hmm. I have, say, a thousand followers, but I get 500 likes and 50 comments per post, compared to someone who probably has 20,000 followers, but only gets a maybe 200 likes five comments per post I'm more valuable than the person with the most followers because it shows yeah. that my my follower base is more inclined to purchase for me because of the fact that they're always watching me engaging with my profile and that's what companies and you know entrepreneurs are looking for when they want to work with say another organization or an influencer um, so that's why I never like to stress followers as much some people it's crazy because I actually had a woman that she didn't want to hire me which is fine she didn't want to uh, hire me because she wanted followers but the way that she was explaining it it's she wanted a specific amount of followers because she thought they were going to convert into clients and customers and I did try to explain to her like they that that's not how it really works but she didn't want to hear it so I just said you know hey that means you weren't meant for me like, you go ahead and learn that hard lesson yeah like it, it wanting a specific amount of followers is it's for example if, if you're someone who's already established you already have um, an, a, a great amount of customers people purchasing from you but maybe you just want your Instagram to look you know a little bit more pleasing to the eye then that definitely makes sense to want followers but for mm -hmm. her it was just like she wanted more customers and clientele so I'm trying to tell her if you want to work with me I I can work with you with that, but they're not going, it, a follower doesn't mean that you're going to get those, that same amount of purchases. But No, that makes sense. That makes sense because she could sit there with 250 people who are really engaged and get 25 consistent clients. Exactly. You see? Mm -hmm. Right? Because most people, you don't need that many clients. Mm -hmm. Like you Depending on what you're doing. Exactly. You don't need that many people to make it. Like right now I'm coaching. I think I got five consistent clients that I'm coaching. And I have mm -hmm. enough people. Like, I'm not interested 
And, um, you know, when I do my, my sprees where I hire people on every six months, I open up my books to hire, bring new people on. And I only take on a new three or four. I'm never looking to have, oh, I need 20 people to be coaching 20 people. I don't want 20 people's lives in my mind. Right. I just don't. I just don't. So, you know, I'd be happy if I get two out of my 4,000 followers. You see? That lady needs to think like you, Gloria. Yeah. Yeah, they just don't. That's why I wanted you to speak on that because people get really caught in. And initially, I got, oh, I don't have enough followers. I don't have enough followers. I don't have enough followers. But then I started looking at my insights and really started paying attention to the, the dynamic of my page. Then I started learning very quickly that that doesn't really matter. Yep. That certain things people like when I post. Mm -hmm. And this is why my superstar layout ends up on my page very often. You see? It increases engagement. Mm -hmm. this, she increases engagement. My daughter, my three-year-old's famous. People know her more than they know me. <laughs> they do. Is that, oh, is that the superstar? That's the star. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's because it starts coming across more people's timelines and stuff like that. It's just, there's so many different hacks and so many tricks to it. Yeah. And people just don't understand that. Even when you tag people and tag stuff, people are like, why is every single post that you put out about something you do, you tag everybody? Yes, because if I tag these 15 people who are vending this event, I am actually reaching every single one of their followers. Exactly. And you know that. <laughs> it's a win-win for everybody. Mm -hmm. Like I did an event the other day and I, was, and I was just like, okay, I had to tag my own business. I'm like, excuse me. Um, tag me, tag me, tag me, tag me, because I need the access. That's that's the availability. I don't just show up to show up. I show up honestly for the exposure. Exactly. And for me to get exposure, I need to be tagged in every single post. Because mm -hmm. then that's how, uh, like in every on every social media platform, that's how they see. Oh, this person. Oh, this person is important. So let's put them higher, so that we so that more people can reach them. Exactly, Mundo, which is now Instagram web at the top of the list. Mm -hmm. You really are. That's that. How long have you been doing that for? I don't know. I just really got you. I realized that over the weekend. Because really I was out yeah. doing like Matt, a whole bunch of events back to back to back. And people say, Oh, it's your Instagram. I was like, It's Black Girl Every. And, oh, there you are. So they put the E in. Black Girl, you know, it's a lot of Black girls. And so they put mm -hmm. the E in. Boom. Yeah, you ain't got to type my whole thing and find me. <laughs> that takes time. I'm proud of that. You know, going into our two-year anniversary this Saturday, it's great to, to know that we're at this space at this point in two years. Oh, wow. Only two years? Mm-hmm. That means you was putting in work. <laughs> Trust me. That's why I quit Instagram a few times. So again, tell everybody where they can find you to learn more tricks like that. Because I know a lot, right? And But there's stuff that I'm still going to be learning from you too. Mm -hmm. So people can definitely learn from you because you had the insight and you like actually doing this stuff, especially with that content development. Yes. Because some people I love content, I'd be looking like. I love working with content development. Oh my gosh. I can't wait because um, pretty soon I'm going to have one of my clients or at least try to get her because she's very she's exactly like you very outgoing very um like supportive of other uh black owned businesses so i, I definitely want to get her on my platform because we've been doing some really good things with her her instagram platform she's already starting to grow and see um engagement mm -hmm. follow a little bit of followers too and people are inquiring like crazy so i can't wait for you guys to see that too but you guys can reach me at um on my instagram for now i am developing a website um, but you can reach me on my Instagram, Melly, M-E-L-L-Y, Media Co, as in short for company, Co, C-O. And there, there'll be a link tree um, and you'll be able to click on it. And just, if you want to contact me, hit the contact me uh, for a button and then fill out the form and I'll be able to reach you guys. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Thank you so much, Melanie, for your time this evening. It has definitely been great interviewing with you today and talking about all your skill sets and sorry i'm getting my phone ready let me take this picture right because you're gonna be in a reel later <laughs> okay like literally i'm, I'm not playing around i'm gonna be in a whole reel see and then you gotta oh uh, 
and then you got a, a plane ride to catch in, in two two hours. It's a ten forty five flight. I'm only going about twenty minutes from my house to the airport, and it's LaGuardia, so it's a small airport. So like oh. you know, I'll be ready. And I'm I'm a good person like who likes to get there like at you know the plane they're about to close the door so I can just sit down. <laughs> I hate standing on a stupid line or standing there trying to get to your seat. Yeah. So annoying. You know what's even more annoying when people start getting up like the moment the uh, airplane touches down? <laughs> but I realize I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to get up too because they're already covering me. <laughs> they're already blocking me. I'm the last person off the plane all the time. Like, I and know. I don't care because I'm just like, why are y'all doing that? Like, where are you going? They just can't wait where to get off going? my plane. Is it? Oh my! We're on the ground. Where are you going? They haven't they even. They still opened have to put the little breaker back. things on. The earmuff people are not done flashing. Like sit still. Sit down. My flight is at two in the morning, so I'm 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 I'm, I'm be half sleep. You have to tell me to get up. Oh yeah. So you, how long are you gonna be in Atlanta for? Uh, I fly back Friday. Friday, come back. Oh, so it's like a nice little short thing. Yeah, it's a quick in and out business trip. I told you I'm standing like on the corner like a hooker selling my books. <laughs> That's what I do. <laughs> like a um, I forget what you call those people that like they're in the middle of the street, but the the street has a yes. A he- a, yes. It's not a no, it's not a heckler. Heckler is different. Oh, I forgot that name. I hate when I forget a word. I'm gonna be out there <laughs> with giant signs. Buy my book. Follow Black Girl Everything. Buy my book. That's, That's what I need, That's to, be. I need to start to start, I don't know, walking these streets and say, get Melly Media. <laughs> last time I was in Atlanta, I was at, well, I did a pop up there last year. When was I there? I was there last year sometime. I can't remember at this point. And um, I was on literally hanging on a pole in the corner to my follow Black Girl Everything. Follow me. Follow me. And a lot of people followed. Really? Where where was you? On a corner of the library in Stone Mountain, where I'm going to be doing my, my book signing. Oh yeah, my I literally God. stood outside and was yelling at people in their cars, talked to a lot of people, because I was doing an outdoor pop-up at the time. So there was Black businesses there and everything else like that. I collaborated with the library for part of my national tour. Mm-hmm. And um, I was just talking to mad random people in cars. I'm gonna... I don't like talking to people too, by the way. You really so could... Really? Because you seem like you're, you're really, you like it. Because me, I'm like, who? I didn't get on her level. I don't know how to do that. I like it in context. So right now, I'm. this is what I'm supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. But um, I'm going to be on a plane like this. <laughs> Prepping yourself? Just quiet. Just quiet. I'm a cancer, so I go into my shell. But when I come out, I come out. You come I'm out. I think, oh my gosh, my sister's, I think my sister's a canter. Yeah. July, is your birthday July? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm July 3rd. Hers is, oh shoot, 11th? July. Oh my God, I forgot. Oh, she's a cancer. She's one of us. Oh, take her. <laughs> I know we could be a bit much, but I don't know. All right, so that's our time for today. As I said, I gotta go to the airport. So thank you so much for your time. It's been great talking to you. We'll be working more and so more together, especially yes. as you release some information in the, in the September issue of the Black or Everything magazine. Yeah. I said hello. Ha ha. Your full place, right? You can talk about yourself in there. <laughs> so anyway, so everybody else, the new magazine for um, the, the first issue will be right now tentatively coming out on Saturday. It's very tentative. Okay. It's being edited right now. So, uh, you know, what's the good thing? It's a digital magazine. So simple. It's got to upload okay. a file. So it's real simple to do. So I have it okay. until midnight of the 25th. Okay. <laughs> uh, all right, we'll see what happens. But, you know, depends on how, many, how busy I am while I'm in Atlanta. Well, it's the 21st. So you got till the 25th? Mm-hmm. I have all the content. Everything is there. It's honestly just placement and okay. just re-editing and flow. So... You it shouldn't there. be that bad. I could already tell bad. you pull a lot of all-nighters. I ain't pulling no all-nighters. I'm sending it right to my editor, and that's a more. Oh. It's like, hey, edit this. You better edit this. You better start reading. Oh, I can't wait to have an editor, an assistant. You know, I have a great group of friends. 
mm-hmm. you know, she is one of my besties and um, we work very, very closely together. My event management team is actually my wife and my sister-in-law and my publicist has is a really good friend of mine. So I'm surrounded around my very people. cool people who I do pay. <laughs> yeah, some people be thinking that, um, like, just because you guys are like related that you're not going to pay them or something. No, 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 no. I actually do pay my people. I do. Mm-hmm. I do. I do. Do I pay them completely what they're worth? Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. Our publicist, yeah. I mean, that the rest of them, nah, not really. Yeah. But you know, I pay them. I pay them. I pay them in love. Mm-hmm. I pay them. They you know when we go on my when I do my tour dates and stuff like that, they travel with me for free. Oh, you, you see? Know? Yeah, they travel for free, and um, you know, my wife is my. Yeah, I do. I started paying my wife though, because she does all my graphics. I so I started wait. paying her for her services too. I wanna. Uh... I want my husband to start paying me. <laughs> he better. Hey, you gotta have that line of separation. Mm-hmm. Nobody got time. But let me go before I miss my flight. So I love you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye bye. <laughs> bye.